Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today we're here for the final episode of this year's November challenge and I ended up including fewer films than what I intended. No surprise here but even though they were fewer I ended up talking about several films that I had been wanting to discuss for a very long time and the film that I will be talking about today is no exception. As you can see by the title of today's video I will be discussing Niagara released in 1953 and directed by Henry Hathaway. It's Marilyn Monroe skyrocketing to new dramatic heights. Hello, hello, please? You can't. You'll be torn to pieces. As I was saying, Niagara is a film that I had been meaning to talk about for quite some time and I feel that it is a movie that even within Marilyn Monroe's filmography tends to get a bit overlooked but in any case in my opinion it is a really fine film noir and one that I think has many interpretations and many selling points besides the glorious appearance of both Marilyn Monroe and the Niagara Falls. In regards to the story the film starts with a married couple who embark on a delayed honeymoon at Niagara Falls. Their names are Ray and Polly Cutler and they were played by Max Schwalter, then Casey Adams and Jean Peter who upon their arrival at the cabin they had rented realized that it is occupied by another couple formed by George and Rose Loomis played by Joseph Cotton and Marilyn Monroe. George is a veteran recently discharged from an army mental hospital and Marilyn Monroe plays his younger sultry wife. These are two very different couples who end up crossing paths and what starts for the Cutlers as a major initial inconvenience turns for a while into an increasing factor fascination especially for Polly and then it starts getting more and more dangerous leading to a murderous scenario and a really exciting final climax. That is the premise for this really exciting thriller and film noir which has obviously the beautiful backdrop of the Niagara Falls. Really quite an excellent setting for a movie featuring crimes of passion. As I was saying at the beginning of this video this movie has several selling points in my opinion. Some of them are very very obvious but one I am particularly drawn to is this idea of twisting a seemingly fantastic and romantic premise which is traveling to the Niagara Falls to celebrate the honeymoon and twisting that into a darker story also the view of the marriages that the movie presents both the one formed by George and Rose Loomis on paper and on screen a very unstable and troubled pairing who are obviously not a match for one another but but then there is also the married couple formed by Ray and Polly Cutler who on the other hand on paper seem to be a perfect couple but there are several things in the movie that are really not at all so idyllic. Ray seems to be super focused on his job in this quite romantic scenario but as the film progresses and as Polly gets more and more in danger I think that it forces Ray to pay more attention and to start 
trusting his wife. So that, in my opinion, is a very interesting point of view. When you see the film, to notice the dynamics between the two couples, Niagara originally started as an idea conceived around setting a story at Niagara Falls by Walter Reich, who is the writer of this movie, who teamed up with Richard Green and Charles Brackett to write the screenplay for Niagara. And I think this is also another selling point of Niagara, the idea of setting the conflict with such a stunning and uncontrollable and big scenario. But coming back to the script of Niagara, it was written, as I was saying, by Walter Reich, who was an Austrian-born writer and filmmaker who had previously collaborated with Charles Brackett, a name you might also remember because he had a very long and very fruitful collaboration collaboration with Billy Wilder, but Walter Reich had already worked with Brackett and Bill Wilder for the script of the brilliant Ninoshka. They collaborated also several times, including films like Titanic or Journey to the Center of the Earth, an adventure film that I really, really love, both also produced by Charles Brackett. I have to also mention the director of Niagara, who was Henry Hathaway, as I said at the beginning. At this stage of his career, as I say many times, he was a veteran, so was Walter Reich, and a director probably better known for his westerns and action-filled adventure films but who also contributed quite significantly to film noir with films such as Johnny Apollo, The House on 92nd Street, The Dark Corner, Kiss of Death, or call North Side 777. He had a very direct style, very visual, as you can see in Niagara, certainly, and also, as I said, very action driven. So, this is certainly also something that you can see in the film, especially towards the second half of the movie, in which he also tries to immerse ourselves within the action. This is something also that you can appreciate in films like The House on 92nd Street. He also directed another movie that I was really eager to discuss in November but I couldn't like 14 hours but in any case a really fine filmmaker no matter the genre another major selling point of the film which certainly contributes to its modern feel in my opinion it's its cinematography by Joseph McDonnell which probably along with Leave Her to Heaven might be the best or one of the best examples of color photography in a film noir because not only the Niagara surroundings are beautifully captured but also with the colors of the costume, it creates such a colorful, expressive richness comparable to Douglas Sirk written on the wind. It is that level of passion and expression through color, through composition, mixed with wonderful costume design, in this case by Dorothy Jenkins. McDonald also photographed both Jean Peters and Marilyn Monroe in two other films, also released in 1953, which were Pick Up on South Street, a wonderful Samuel Fuller film noir and How to Marry a Millionaire, also the first movie to be shot in CinemaScope. So 1953 was a big year for Joseph McDonald, but it was even a greater year for Madeline Monroe because she had the consecutive releases of Niagara, Gentlemen Prefer Blonde, and How to Marry a Millionaire. And the combination of these three movies really solidified her screen persona. And even though in Niagara, I think she's really confined to that femme fatale as opposed to a movie like don't bother to knock which is a really fantastic film that I covered last November. She nevertheless possesses such charisma that it is no wonder that she really became a superstar after this film. Niagara was initially conceived as a vehicle for Anne Baxter, who was supposed to play the part that Jean Peters plays in the film. She turned it down and then the part played by Marilyn Monroe was significantly boosted to make her a star. I have also read that James Mason was the original choice for the part that Joseph Cotton plays. And even though I really love James Mason, I also love the work that Joseph Cotton does in this film. I think he plays a really sad figure. I also like very much Jean Peters, an actress who was also promoted by 20th Century Fox, but who never quite reached that level of superstardom. And also because her career 
ended up really abruptly after she married Howard Hughes and it is really a shame that she didn't get more parts like the one she plays in movies like Pick Up on South Street and also Deep Waters alongside Dana Andrews because you can really tell that she had much more to give than the quiet wife that she is also confined to in Niagara. Aside from the also blonde versus brunette stereotype which I think is something that definitely we should put to bed and also another very important member of the crew of Niagara was the editor in this case it is Barbara McLean pioneering film editor who worked for 20th Century Fox even becoming chief of the Fox editing division by the end of 1940s she won the Academy Award for her work on Wilson and she was nominated six other times for films such as The Rains Came or All About Eve she was as I read a very revered professional so much so that she became some sort of a guru for Daryl Zanuck, the head of Fox Studios. So her career was quite an impactful one. Another female professional that I don't think we hear a lot of, but one that much like the relationship between Thelma Schoonmaker and Martin Scorsese, she had also a very fruitful collaboration with the director Henry King. They had an extensive collaboration for nearly 20 years. So again, quite a name to keep in mind. Also quite responsible for the rhythm of Niagara. So these are all the selling points of Niagara to keep in mind if you consider watching the film again or if you haven't watched it yet, which I highly encourage you to do as always. And I think it is, in my opinion, a very modern film, a wonderful film noir that I wanted to discuss for a long time. I hope that you enjoyed it. If you have watched it, feel free as always to leave a comment down below. I wanted to thank you so much for joining me during this really odd November. I know that I've been releasing videos here and there it makes no sense but it's been as probably some of you know a very very hard very difficult and very unpredictable year so I'll do my best to talk about the films that I wanted to also discuss during this November at some other time but I wanted to again thank you all for having joined me and for your kindness and your support it makes the world to me also to my mom really I wanted to thank for her support during all this time and her hard work to get better I feel so grateful thank you so much and as always take care stay safe and see you all very soon with another video bye